What's up trainers? It's Moose Punk here. Today is a glorious day because guess what we're doing today? We're capturing our Mew. That's right, I have completed all my research. I think I took a lot longer than I should have, but it is what it is and I did it as quickly as I possibly could. So here we are at a very scenic location. We are about to capture our first Mew. I'm so excited to get a chance to capture this guy. And I decided to do it over water for you guys because in AR plus mode when he turns invisible, that's gonna be probably the hardest place to catch him is over some water. So stay tuned, let's capture our Mew. Alrighty, here we are. This is a very exciting and scary moment. And I say scary because for me personally, AR plus mode has not been working well. I'm actually gonna make a video to show you guys some examples, but to use AR plus mode with extreme caution. I think that for some reason a glitch happened when they released the Lugia and it kind of broke the AR plus mode. So keep a lookout for that video. Once I post, I'll link it up here. But for now, let's go ahead and finish our research. So as you can see on the screen here, I'm at seven out of eight and I'm gonna go ahead and claim my reward. You know what trainers, originally I was gonna wait a little bit longer to try and claim it during windy weather to try and get a boost. But I don't think that actually holds true that you can claim the boost. Oh my gosh, I, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And it's just a white screen. I really hope that's not like a glitch. And just white screen here. WTF, what's going on here? All right, Whew. God, these glitches scare the crap out of me. All right, so there was the Mew and he disappeared. Um, but what I'm gonna do is take a couple of quick AR photos first and then I'll be back on with you guys to capture it. All right, trainers, I took a lot of AR photos, but those are really hard to take. Thank you so much, Moose Pink, for braving the cold with me and helping me out here. But without further ado, let's go ahead and capture this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and claim the reward. And there it is, what a beauty, the Mew. Oh, that's absolutely phenomenal. And he just changed to invisible. So let's go ahead and go by the water. All right guys, so here it is over the water. It looks beautiful. Now from everything that I've heard, you have to hit it three times. And on the third time that you hit it with the ball, you're gonna actually capture it. So let's see if that theory holds true. And obviously, since he's invisible, very difficult to throw at. First one was way off, way off again. All right, so that's the first time. That was the first hit. So this one should break out, like I thought. Here it is again. Guys, this is the most difficult one to throw at that I've ever thrown. He's just so tiny and he jumps around so much. Obviously being invisible doesn't help it a lot. So wow, he is the most difficult Pokemon to throw at. And uh, originally my intention was to wait for windy weather to get a boost on this guy, but I've been trying to get confirmation on that or not and it seems that I can't get confirmation on it. Most people are saying that all of the rewards here come as level 15 Pokemon, and that you're not gonna be able to get a weather boost on them. Kind of similarly to hatching eggs, where if an egg hatches, you don't get that weather boost. Um, the thing that made most sense to me 
is that the Mew doesn't have a, a location. So when you capture it, it's not gonna show you a location. So since the location isn't there, it doesn't know where it is or what kind of a weather boost to give you. So I just decided, you know what? I just want this thing right away. So that was the third one, guys. I hit it the third time. This should be the capture from everything that I've heard. This should be it. <laughs> yeah! That was awesome, guys. Woo! Got my Mew. Super excited about that. Registered a Pokedex. Oh my lord. In pixel form, so. Kind of cool that I was able to get in pixel form still. 1292. So unfortunately, that is not really a good uh, IV. Let's appraise it though, just to double check. Simply amazes me with HP the strongest. So maybe in the low 80s. So I'll have to IV check it and maybe I'll get back to you guys later. So wow, that is crazy. I cannot believe I have a Mew in my collection. Hope you guys got yours too. Wow, trainers, what an amazing experience. I cannot believe that I finally have a Mew. And I didn't want to end the episode just there because I want to give you guys some tricks and tips on how to complete all the objectives and what it takes so that when you get there, when you're doing all your Mew research, you basically have all the knowledge that you need. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull up a chart here and that'll show you all the objectives that it takes. Now from all these objectives, there are some pretty tough tough ones, but I have some tricks with it. So the first one that's gonna be very tough is capturing a ditto. Um, so again, I'm gonna pull up another chart here and that'll show you all the Pokemon that can turn into a ditto. So as you see on the chart, uh, ditto most of the time is gonna be a Pidgey, Rattata, or any of those. And the further that you go down that circle, the more rare that one of those Pokemon will be a ditto. Personally, I almost always get a Rattata to morph into a Ditto. I don't know if you guys are the same way. Um, but a little trick on this portion is actually check your local chat. If it's on Discord or wherever else you coordinate, you know, if someone in your ear finds a Ditto, have them post it because it's just like a regular spawn. So that Pokemon is gonna turn into a Ditto for everyone. So if someone finds a Ditto, Post it on your local channel and that'll really help trainers out getting that ditto and not having to wait for too long. But in general, I do believe that the ditto spawns have increased due to this new research so people don't have to wait as long to get it. But your best bet might be checking the Discord channels. Um, another kind of tough one is getting all the candy you need for the Magikarp if you don't already have it. But again, a trick or tip for that is check the Sylph Road because they have a nest atlas that'll give you all the locations of the nests. So just look up your local Magikarp nest, go there, and then that'll give you enough candies. Also, if you're going to a Magikarp nest, you have a good chance of getting a shiny. So hopefully you saved a good Magikarp or a shiny one that you wanted to evolve and you have enough candy. Um, I really didn't like that part of it because I was trying to save my Magikarp candy until I get a shiny. I also didn't have a good Magikarp and even though I did three gym raids, my highest IV was about 69. And I did not want to have a 69 IV Gyarados in my collection, but I wanted the Mew, so I just had to do it. Um, so anyways, and then uh, the only other thing is catching the ghost type, which again shouldn't be too difficult, especially if you check a nest or if you just wait till the evening, then I believe there are also increased spawns. Now typically ghost types are going to be in the graveyard, but really they pop up all the time. And as a last resort, if you can't do that, then remember there are actually ghost types as raid bosses. Currently we have a Duskull. Uh, I wonder if the Sableye is still a raid boss. I think so. So as a last resort, if you can't get it there, uh, go ahead and do a raid boss battle. Now this is probably the greatest trick that I've learned as far as completing these objectives. That one that requires you to do 10 raids. Now I was under the assumption that what that meant is I have to use 10 different raid passes and go raid at 10 different gyms. But apparently that's not the case. So what you can do is actually complete that task in only one gym using only one pass. Now the best thing to do is go to a gym that you're actually going to battle eventually. Let's say a Tyranitar. 
So go to that gym and put in Pokemon you absolutely don't care about that you want to toss or just catch a bunch of Pokemon specifically for this purpose. And then go ahead and go into the gym, put in that team of crap Pokemon and just let the timer expire. Once the timer expires, that's going to count as a raid. So keep doing that. So expire the timer, go back in, put in that same crappy team, and sure, it's going to count towards that research. Now, as I was saying, ideally it's going to be a gym that you actually do want to defeat, so it's not you're just not wasting your path. So for example, as the Tyranitar example, go ahead, do that battle, after you get nine times. So let it time out nine times and then go ahead and do the final one, complete it successfully, and you will get your 10. So that's amazing. I wish I would have known about that trick when I was doing it because I wasted several passes before I found out about it. So that's why I wanted to pass it on to you guys in case you haven't heard about it. This can really help you um, in that regard. Now the final, final trick and tip that I have for you is number one, to take some really cool AR photos. What you do is you have to keep running because when a Mew appears, he's gonna be solid for about three to five seconds, but then afterwards he turns transparent and he never goes back to his original form. He just stays semi-invisible the whole time. So if you wanna take some good AR photos, you have to just run, and then you click back on him to claim him again, and then he'll pop up uh, with his full color. And then that'll give you three to five seconds to take that nice AR shot, and then again, he'll turn invisible. But you can always run, and you can keep doing that indefinitely. You can keep running, and, and it's not gonna, you're not gonna lose it, nothing's gonna happen. You'll just have to go back on the research tab and hit claim, and then he'll be back there. The coolest thing about that is that when you run, Mew actually goes back into your research and it will allow you to claim him again. So basically, what that means is that you can take your Mew with you everywhere that you go. So you can go to one location, bust it out, take some awesome photos, show them off, maybe even take some photos with your friends, and then run. He'll be back under that research tab and you can claim him again later. So you can go to one location, take some cool photos, go to a different location, take more cool photos. So really, you have indefinite options on doing that and you can keep doing it as, as many times as you would like. You're never gonna lose him, so don't worry about that. When you run, he's just gonna go back into your research tab and it'll allow you to claim him again. So I sort of, sort of wish I wouldn't have claimed him immediately, but then again, you know, I run a YouTube channel, so I wanna be the first to get stuff like this just for you guys so I can, you know, make videos and give you some tips on it. But if you guys aren't so anxious, I would really suggest not claiming your Mew and you can just play around with it indefinitely until they, of course, release something different um, in the research in the future. So that is the coolest thing that I've heard of that you can keep taking your Mew with you everywhere you go and just take a bunch of different photos of different people and kind of show him off. So that's awesome. So those are all the tips I have for you guys. I really hope that you get your Mew. It's a very exciting time in Pokemon Go. This is just awesome. I'm sort of really liking the story mode, although I have my own comments on how they should do it differently. Um, what do you guys think? Do you, do you like the new research? Do you not like it? Do you think they should have done it a little differently? Uh, the one thing I'm kind of struggling with is that you only get one chance at a Mew. So the, the IV, for example, you're just gonna get one shot at it. So that's what I don't really like. Uh, in my opinion, we should have received the option for Mew to appear in the wild once you complete that research. I think that would have been a lot cooler. Then you can choose which one you're gonna catch. So you can wait for a good Ivy one, you could potentially wait till they release a shiny or something like that, or even get that weather boost. So I would have liked to see it more like that um, instead of just one shot and whatever you get, you get. I don't like that. Uh, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I always respond to all my comments. And let me know how far you guys are on your research. So this concludes the episode. Happy hunting, trainers. Till next time. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And if you did, 
make sure to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on all future videos. And hey, drop me a comment below as I answer all my comments. Thanks so much trainers, I take great pride in bringing the absolute best Pokemon Go content for you guys. Happy hunting!